Vegas at the fitting to bring the love to sing. We the future they can be. Let's stay encouraged, young brother, young sister. Get shade the black stars light like silver. The push of the black fist, the language of what's happening. You gotta be proud of this black skin. Welcome back to the Purpose Producer Podcast. I'm your host, Georgia Dawkins, and I'm loving this black skin, okay? Welcome back to season four. This season, we are celebrating Black boy joy. I'm talking to Black men of all ages and all backgrounds about how they define joy, how they cultivate joy, and how they spread joy. And today, we're actually going to talk to an artist, a poet, a producer who reached out to me, y'all. He pitched me. He saw another Black Boy Joy story and said, I need a piece of that. Please welcome to the Purpose Producer, Mr. Justin Artis. All right. Hey, yes. How you doing? Say that right. I love it. I love it. I love it. See, because I heard you correcting other people, you know, because we like to make it special and add that teeth, you know, at the end. I I don't know what it is, Georgia. Like, but you know what? The more that I hear it, I'm like, okay, I kind of like that because it does add some flair. It it makes me feel a bit more sophisticated in 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 my blackness you know what i mean hey my it could be a stage so, name it could be a stage sure. name we don't know sure. down the line so, <laughs> it, look as long as it's not justin artiste that that's mm-hmm. like, okay come on man you you see the a so look justin let's get a joy check real quick i've been talking to my guests about how they rate their joy on a scale of one to ten yes. so where are you today where i am today i think i'm sitting like at an eight point uh, maybe even a nap. Part of that is on a Monday. Yeah, on a mo- like real talk on a Monday. Okay, okay. okay. He- hear me when I say now. Part of it is because I just had a previous meeting uh, for a big time gig that I I pretty much have been waiting for, uh, and the meeting went very well. I'm not gonna lie, I was actually a little nervous, which I really don't get per se because I'm very confident uh, about myself. Uh, my blackness, what I offer in this music space. And so for me to be nervous prior to, it was like, oh, okay, this this really must mean something. And it, it went very well. I felt, uh, especially because it's business, I think the right word is just felt the honor and the respect of we really would like to have you at our event. And that uh, our kids will benefit from from performing. And so, and it wasn't that, you know, like you mentioned prior to us coming on, it was conversational, it was transparent, it was honest. That's who I am. What you see is what you get. Like, I'm not here to, you know, show you a gimmick or or I'm not who I say I am. So it, it was, it was dope. So I got off feeling like, okay, like, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. You know, I love to see a black man smile. That's how this series started uh, with this 11 year old okay. boy, Makai. Makai went viral in January after seeing his mom in her wedding dress and he teared up a little bit. And I was like, wait a minute, those are tears of joy. I am not yeah. <laughs> used to seeing black men so happy that they're brought to the point of tears. And so that inspired this series. So I'm very happy that you reached out because you're not only an artist, a poet, and a producer. You are a purpose producer. And so I do ask yes. all my guests this. Yes. Yes. A purpose producer is someone who's using their gifts to help others reach their destiny. So, Justin, what makes you a purpose producer? Wow. Well, first of all, just what you saying that I forgot to say in the beginning. All oh, honor to God for being here. I gotta shout out my wife Kelly. I love you. A shout out to my two boys, Jason Jameis. I love you. Jameis, rest in heaven. Uh but yes, what makes me a, a purpose producer? And by the way, I just, I love that phrase because it just, it's its like two of my favorite words put together. Though the alliteration too, you know what I mean? Thank you, sir. I'm not even sure if I can answer it though. Georgia, what makes me a purpose producer? I think of, of one, realizing that I am, knowing what that means for me. And then doing it, actually uh, wrote, hopefully I can remember it, you know, the notes on IG now that you can. I really don't know what they're for, but, you know, I just want to get <laughs> Nobody a knows. Of, uh, you know, a piece of encouragement. So I think you can kind of do whatever, but I literally just wrote on there that 
making it is um George, I think I got to actually look because I don't want to jack it up because I think it's pretty profound because the term of making it, what does that mean? Especially in the industry, right? How do you define success? Yeah, exactly. It's so different for everybody. It, yeah. Making it is doing it and being consistent. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think the purpose producer is just knowing I have a purpose in it. Like I'm not just doing this to make money. I do believe, you know, especially in the world of hip hop, but in music, especially now, you know, everybody in their mama's mama and grandmama is in music. Like, you know someone. And I think that's dope. That's cool. The accessibility is nice. The tech is nice. But who out here really doing it for the craft, for the purpose mm -hmm. that they have in it to change the lives? And for me, it's about growth, not only for myself, but the people who hear me. And then obviously in these other areas that I'm in. So, just knowing that I do this more than just to make a dollar or potential fame or the validation that comes along with it. Yes, it's nice. It's dope. Very humbling. But at the end of the day, I do this for free. Like, you know what I mean? I came up with a phrase years ago. If you can't do it for free, don't do it at all. And so no matter if you pay me or uh, I guess I'm paying you, whatever the case is the quality doesn't disappear. And so yeah. the producer part is that I got to produce. This is what I do. It's in me. Georgia I tried to quit. It ain't happening. So that means, again, it's purposeful. I have to do this, live and die by it, you know. So, yeah. For, Look, so shout out to everybody who tried to quit their dream and, and it snuck up on them or it woke them up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Come or on. it just won't let them. It'll keep you in the chokehold if you don't do the on. thing that you're, that you're put here to do. So. Sometimes, as you said, just existing, just existing and doing and doing the thing that you do well um, is enough. You know, a lot of people yes. think, oh, the purpose producer or being of service in someone's life means you have to be the one cutting the big check or you have to be, you know, lift, doing the heavy lifting. Sometimes it's just existing. So I love that you said that. When did you know that that you were were this artist? Great question. Great name, by the way, for somebody who's out here in this industry. I mean, oh, thank Justin, you. Thank you. artist. I mean. Yeah. First and last name. Uh, excuse me. First and middle name. Okay. That's the government. Shout out to my dad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> shout, out, shout out to my dad um, for coming up with it. He combined for the first name. His name is James. My uh, grandmother's name uh, is Ernestine. So Justin mm -hmm. and then artist. I believe was his father's name. Wow. And so real talk, I never liked my middle name. I don't know. Artists just seem old and, you know, it was like, I can't rock with this. But when I got the word from God that he wanted me to this space of being an artist, it was about nine or 10 years after I started my journey in music, uh, Someone I was working with was like, you know, Jay, what, you know, what's your artist name going to be? And I said, I don't know, but it's not going to have little Jay or, you know, whatever. Because at this time, you know, that's what was going on. And he said, well, I think you should go with Jastin Artist. I was like, man, get out of here. I ain't, I ain't doing that. Now, in true rapper form, which I'm not at all one of the best freestylers, just something I don't do. But I, I try this and do my thing. I jumped on a, on a record in the home studio and. You know, Jaston Artists, yo, one, two, one, two. And I ain't come up with nothing uh, else ever since. <laughs> so I just like. Sometimes it's I'm, all in know, the name. Sometimes it's enough. You is. know, you don't have it to is. do the extra stuff. That's your name. That's what, 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 what you were given. Yeah. I used to not like my name, honestly. People used to sing really? to me growing up. Um, and it is a family name for anybody who doesn't know that I'm not named after the state or the country. OK, OK, I, it was all, always the, the teacher that I hated, too. It was always that person who wanted to sing Georgia on my mind on my birthday. And it's like, but I hate you. Like, why are you? I now hate the song. And Ray Charles. How you hate Ray? <laughs> I know it took me. <laughs> it took me a while to grow into it, but um, it's mine now. I own it. Yeah, I love it. You, and I will say that's OK. I think um, I will say, let me just, just shout you out. Again, applause to season four for you doing you instant. I could see 
the joy in you, the purpose in you. And I'm just talking just seconds, the branding, um, hearing you speak, your your profile, like all of it just spoke, which is why I want to comment it. And then, of course, shout out to my guy, Nemo, uh, because that's how we, we got this connection. But um, going Thank back you, to the question, though, yes, yes, absolutely. Um, I... I feel like I was surrounded by music and didn't know that this was going to be the calling. Mm -hmm. Band Geek, shout out to all my band geeks, you know, second, third chair, clar uh, clarinetist for me, uh, marching band. I did, I did it all, man. And I was a poet, but it was one of those things that I wrote to get these fillers out. Yeah, these things that were going on, you know. Shout out to my mom, single parent with twins. I have a twin sister. Uh, wow. Shout out to my dad because even though we didn't have the relationship that I wanted growing up, of course, it forced me to do a lot of things and and dig into myself. But I knew there was a connection there, and, and we have a relationship now. Um, so I was writing about these things, but I still had no goal of really being like a professional artist a speaker or this or that. So I will say that a turning point in knowing at, at least like, okay, I, I see my cousin who's DJ and I see uh, my other cousin who's, who's a New York rapper. He's one of my favorite rappers. I'm seeing my cousin, uh, other, another cousin who's in the industry uh, working with Jay-Z and, and, and all of this, I'm seeing all of these things, but it's like, I don't, you know, like that's what's up. Um, but it was my friend Jared from high school who was playing the guitar and he was playing Stairway to Heaven by Led Zeppelin. Now, Georgia, I know he's played this in front of me a billion and one times. Uh, we we used to write together. He was a poet too. He wrote songs. But this one time that he played it, it changed everything. I was like, I got to learn how to play. Asked my mom. She was like, nah. So shout out to my uncle, uh, my uncle Joe, who, my uncle Joe and uh, Curlin who, who uh, got me guitar. Uh, as a graduation present from high school. And that journey started in college, self-taught. And I just finally was like, let's try writing a song. Let, let's see where this goes. It's very similar to poetry, but it's different. And when I did that process, I fell in love. So immediately I went to the uh, the library. This is before Google and, and YouTube University. But I went to the library, which was my best friend. And... I got a bunch of books on songwriting, music industry, and consumed it. Decided right, like literally that session. I believe it was like this, and I've been doing it ever since. You know, starting out with just producing, writing, uh, artist development. You know, I'm an A and R as well, uh, engineering. Like I fell in love teaching myself, learning from others, and then you know, ten years later, she became an artist. And that took it to a whole nother level. Like, you know, you really love something when you, when you go get a book. <laughs> okay. Cause okay. it's not even, I don't care if it's God or that's if it's real. music or what comedy, when you pick up a book, that's a clear indication that you have an appetite for something within you. And so Absolutely. that, that to me sometimes is, you know, is the confirmation, the seeking of the knowledge. And so. That's really great. I know that you also are an HBCU graduate. So talk to me about, you know, once you get, once you got to college and you're unlocking these gifts and music, you know, what was that experience like at your HBCU? Oh man, it started out horribly. Listen, <laughs> They're going to let you know. Ooh, if they hate it, they're going to tell you. Hey, man. I love my Aggies though. I love my Aggies, but it it was an experience because I grew up in a very diverse world uh, here in D.C., you know, you know Alexandria, Virginia, suburbs, uh, you know, wasn't a hood kid, you know, and that's no disrespect or nothing. Uh, but I didn't grow up in that environment. And uh, A&T was in the hood, you know, uh, it still is. Obviously, you know, if you look now, it, it looks nothing like what it was. And I was on the brink of like the last uh, generation a year of uh, with them doing a transformation. So it was different just in, in scenery, right? And even being in Virginia, yeah, I was around black people. There were black people amongst me, but we we had 
you know, white, Chinese, Hispanic, uh, Latin, like we had everyone. And so that's what I was used to. So it's just all shades black. Like, I don't, I don't know how I feel about this, you know? And then I think too, I was in this stage of figuring out obviously who I was, but knew I was different. And, and I don't just say different because that's the thing to say. And, you know, I think it's, it's become a bit uh, diluted a bit, uh, nowadays, but I really was different. Like I carried myself differently than everyone. I looked different. So it was a at first. I wanted to leave uh my twin. She was at uh University of Greensboro, UNCG was up the street. And I went for computer science. But Georgia, I literally after what, a month and a half of C plus plus, I can't do this. It's not clicking. Ten years of me doing this and loving it and I wanted to be a programmer like oh my gosh I was like I don't this ain't this ain't my I don't I don't know what I want to do and so English was the subject that I knew I was good in and that's why I was there like I want to be at the best school in the country for what I want to do but ANT did not have a great English department but I jacked it up you know you know how we do first years there's usually a bust for most you know, I was hanging out I was doing too much but it was it was fall break that I had this epiphany uh, and I think even the first experience with God of just this purpose of this is not for me. I don't want to do this. I know I'm good in this area. So let's just see what happens. And at the fall break, I changed my majors in English. I was like, look, we're going we're gonna to make it happen. You know, this is a, a department that's building. So at least I'll get to, to grow with it. And, um, yeah, it just, it changed everything. And I think from that experience, I got to see culture in a different light. Um, I started to really embrace more. I think my perspective just changed a little bit. Like I've always been the guy that I get along with anyone. Um, there's no judgment with me. I do what you do, but I ain't going to do that. Do that. But I respect you for what you, you know what I mean? And people typically respect me for where I am. But we can still cut up. We can still learn from each other. We can still vibe. And so I just started having those experiences. And, you know, it, it changed my life in, in that regards of understanding myself. But, of course, thanks to some of my teachers, like the real, real professors at ANC that dove in more than just what the curriculum was about African-American studies and history, uh, I, I saw it from a different light as well in terms of our history, our culture. And I think that definitely added to the perspective that I have and now that I carry that if I would have left, I definitely don't think I would be the man that I am. I've mm -hmm. seen some good qualities, but I mm -hmm. still don't think the, what's it, what can I say? Like the the level and the pride. And, and the, the nurturing that, that takes place. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Look, absolutely. if you ever go yeah. to an HBCU, guys, the like HBCU is going to, they're going to give you more than enough every yes. time, okay? Yes. And every, every class you take is going to be African-American yep. history, okay? Because you're yep. going to find out <laughs> yep. who the significant Black people were in that industry, yep. you know, who's starting out. So that's one of the beautiful things about an HBCU. But you said something very important about the path you wanted to take. For 10 years, you thought it was just thing. And then it turned out to be something else. I think a lot of people get stuck in that. They want to hold on to what's familiar instead of, yes. you know, what flows, what flows out of you, what's purpose. Yes. And, you yes. know, it's never too late to go full speed in the opposite direction because our purpose evolves. You're not here to do just one thing. We're, we're creators. This is what we do. Okay. So allow yourself to evolve. That's for whoever's out there listening, who's stuck in a rut. Okay. Allow yourself to, to evolve. And to pivot, Georgia, to piggyback, to pivot. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, it's a big word that's been coming up lately and, and just what I've been doing the last few years, especially doing this and, and being consistent so long, so-called in this one industry. However, uh, you know, as we talked before coming on, yeah, I'm, I'm an artist. I'm a producer. I'm an engineer. I'm an a and &R, I'm a musician. You know, I'm a father, I'm a man, I'm a friend, like, and I take all of those seriously. And granted, like, you can't just dive into all, uh, to everything all at once. But that's the thing that I think time management 
definitely helps a lot with is that little 15, 20 minutes that I that I take to listen to my TD Jakes. Uh, shout out to him on his book, Crushing. I'm reading it for like the third or fourth time now. Uh, that helps in all areas for me, you know, but that little time that I spend on engineering to figure out how to get my 808s right the way that I really need them, it has to, you know what I mean? So like, you got to be willing and open to to just pivot because uh, people think, like you said, that you got to stick to one thing and you don't. I remember when felt and kind of in ways was told that being diverse in all these things was like, and I look at everything. Yeah. I think we were all kind of taught that. Like, get your get yeah. your thing, find out what your thing is, and go do that for and 30 years. <laughs> retire, and then it was literally boom, 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 boom. And I tell you, Georgia, my life has <laughs> been yeah. like that. And I think that was the first moment that it showed me, like, all right. Like, okay, like this wasn't it. But at the same token, I still have a tech background. Like I still understand the language. I still try to keep up to date with certain things. You know, I don't have to dive in like I used to. I think that's the other thing that that ends up being a positive is like it's a throwaway. You know, yeah. just like your job that isn't your dream job. It's not a throwaway. Those skills are transferable. Yeah. That's I mean, information. Like, yeah. Exactly. So, Add that to the toolbox. Yeah, absolutely. So you go to this top, one of the top, y'all. I have to say this because I am a graduate of the Florida A&M University, but you went to North Carolina A&T, all right, one of the top HBCUs in the country, and then you ended up at Full Sail. How did you yes. make that transition? What, what, what made you say, I need to go get a master's degree? Well, if I'm being honest, that was the plan. Come on, Pivot. The, the, the experience from undergrad uh, allowed me to drop due to a freak accident that I had. And so it took me five years to go back to get my uh, bachelor's degree uh, in professional English. And I was like, all right, I'm good. You know, I'm out. you know, these loans is crazy. Uh, you know, trying to pay back and trying to find a job, you know, trying to be in the field, went to school. We all know, like, it, it was rough. However, um, I, I ended up finding out, especially once I started substituting and being in education, that I'm a student. Mm -hmm. But then I also found out that I'm a teacher. And so that love started to really go. That purpose started to show up that I didn't know I had because people always ask me, Jason, you, you have a writing degree. You're going to be a teacher? And I'd be like, no, man, I ain't nothing. That's not. You know, at the beginning, it was editorial writing. I wanted to, you know, music, movies, and write. And so once I stepped into education, it was like, yo, I really have a purpose in this. I feel like fulfillment. The kids vibe with me. Like, I have an understanding with them. And so I think through the years, it kind of just kept sitting on me. And then the more I'm doing music, I'm, con I'm using music to connect to the kids and in these spaces. So... It was all working together, as they say, for my good. And then, you know, about 2017, um, they hit me up with this, you know, this loan information and they told me they consolidated. And mm -hmm. I said, wait, so that means I can go back to school if I want to. Oh, man. wow. And they were like, yeah, you know, if you choose to. I said, let's do that so I can have some more time. You know what I mean? But shout out to my homie, Brian. He, he actually was in school uh, full sale. And I had kind of heard a little bit about it. Of course, I've heard about performing art school. It was something that later I thought, man, I wish I would have gone to like a performing arts high school. But man, maybe I shouldn't have gone to ANT. I should have gone to a. And so we're talking with him and really like knowing his journey and seeing how fulfilled he was and what he was getting from. And I said, you know what? Let me again bet on myself and take this leap. I'm not going to worry about this loan money because it is expensive. Let me just see if this really benefits me and can add to the years of opportunity that I've created for myself. The years of 10,000 plus hours have been studying and crafting and networking and trying to meet the right people to help me get in this journey so I can have the credit. Because we all know it's about that paper to get that paper. So uh, I made the decision, jumped in one year's master's program in entertainment business. 
while working, Ubering, and still making music. Hey, and did you have tough, to be in glad. Florida? Did you have to be on site for not. this degree? Okay. I did not. I did think about it. Uh, I do, looking back, wish that was, but I did it online, which yeah. was, in a lot of ways, people say it's harder. Uh, can agree with that just because, you know, you still have your life and you have to fit in a new class every month for a year. Like, it's, it's a super accelerated program for everyone. So, of course, you just say, okay, well, you just got to be online. That means you decide when to show up, you know, just like you would in person, but it's just a little- Just like, look, when college it, was hard. When nobody, right, you right. know, on that. No wake up call. Yep. No wake Teachers up ain't checking in every day. They don't care. Exactly. <laughs> and so I think, I think online was like worse of yeah. that or more of a challenge to do that, especially because most of us, regardless of what age, but- you know, you got work, you made a uh, relationship, friends, parents, you know, uh, just life. Yeah. And so uh, it, it was a lot, but I'm so glad I did it. Yeah. I want to go back to those, that, that five-year gap, right? To going yes. back to school and finishing deg that degree. And again, that's a, that's a period of time. And I'm, I'm not sure what happened with the accident, but that's, that's a space where most people get stuck. They get stuck in that space. I'm not going back. Too much time has passed. I don't have the money. And it seems like everything for you was just lining up. What was developing for you? What was developing within you during that five-year period? I think it was definitely a big time of cultivation for me, personally. Uh, it was one of those things, you know, I, I'm a baller and I, I played ball, uh, not for the school, uh, but I, you know, personal time and, and I studied the game and I accidentally got hurt and I had surgery and everything and I didn't, I was close to graduating. So I was like, I'm going to drop to, to quote unquote, take an extensive uh, time to heal. Mm. But unfortunately that year, that semester that I went back, cause it happened in spring, I had time over the summer. Uh, and so I came back that fall. I missed missed my financial aid by like a tip mm -hmm. uh because you know you gotta have a gpa up to get the finance oh yeah and i just said that like all right you know my parents didn't have it uh you know i didn't i didn't have another way so it's like just i just focused to say i'm coming back i don't know how long it's gonna take but i'm coming back like i want this degree i worked hard for this i, I went through a lot with just the beginning the shift that happened and I was one of those people, Georgia, that if I wasn't in class, I was crafting. You know, I was doing some other stuff too now. You know, don't give, don't give me a room. <laughs> but everyone knew that I was focused about building this crafting. You know, like I didn't, I didn't let the women and, and my boys and, and the school hoorah of, of just being a college kid dictate what I was supposed to do. And even at this point of, of you know, you got to drop out. Like, what? You know, like you said, many of us, that's it. Like you said, like just that hurt, regardless of why, it's like, nah, I can't do this no more. I work and blah, blah, blah. But I was just very focused that I that I will come back. And I met this guy that like, look, I want to come back. Had that refund to not have to work while in school. And that's exactly what happened. I did not work at all. Um, I had enough finances, you know, to pay the tuition and just focus on, on school. And I was still health challenged and shout out to my, my professors. They worked with me and I graduated and got to see Miss, uh, Michelle Obama give the commencement. Oh, so wow. I was like, oh, it's worth the work. You made it back just in time. Just <laughs> in time. So, uh, but yeah, all of that time, that five year was, was, was working. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, the the roles that I had, they weren't the dream. But I looked at it like they're gonna help me get the dream. Mm -hmm. You know, working with with uh I think a lot of my time was was uh I was a server at Macaroni Grill, which I loved, but it taught me a lot in handling like so many different things, handling people. Um I started a lot at my location. Uh, so I was doing big things, you know, I was doing training, I was doing the catering when it first started, like doing some things, you know what I mean? And so I was just, 
really focused on learning this corporate life and how I want to shift. There are some things I'm saying I don't like. And I think that definitely propelled me to where I am now and focusing on how I want to do, how I want to work with artists differently, how I want to present myself differently as a black artist who does hip hop, but I'm not a rapper, I'm an artist. Like all of these things help me define, you know, where, where I finally ended up shipping. So. so talk to me about your approach to artists. How do you approach artist development? Oh, man. I think the best thing, you said it earlier again, it's about the conversations. I have to get to know the artists that I'm working with, right? And I think a lot of artists, they just pause. They, you know, they just, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could do that. Like I said, everyone can write. You know, you can rhyme cat with hat. I mean, you know, it ain't that hard, you know. But when you're talking about the craft, the substance, reaching people, I mean, it's one of the most universal things on this earth. It's got purpose. It's got to have some purpose in it. And so for me, personally, more outside of just a, right? Like, we all have challenges and problems and issues. And especially if you're talking about a lover of God being you know, just Christian and, and follow this life, whoever you believe in. Um, but what's the solution, man? Like, I need solutions. And so that's what I want to give. So in the same light, it's like, who are you? Like, oh, I'm a hip hop artist. I'm a pop artist. Okay, yeah, but who are you? Like, what are we talking about? Like, what what's the perspective? What What's the journey for you that brought you here that's going to be put in this song? Because oftentimes I've learned, even at the level of, made it too currently people want more than just uh oh i lost you i don't know if you're still here come on back baby come back just hopefully she come i think we still recording y'all but uh Hey, there we go. I was about to pick it up. Yes, I am. All and right. I, I was about to take so, over with hosting. For hey, me. do what you got to do. I think it was still recording, so I'll be able yeah, to pick yeah. that part up. But let me just re-ask the question, you know, um, what is your approach to artist development and how does being an artist make you, you know, the best guy for the job? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, so the, the conversations that I have with the artists to get to know them, and to get to know their journey and really see if they know themselves, that's where it starts. And so in that process, you know, I've made a pivot from, I guess, like the traditional, let's go over these areas of music. Let's make sure that you know how to do this, how to do that, and really made it more uh, person to person approach, personable really uh, taking time to get to know them and then using that information to figure out where we go. Um, and then hopefully by this time that we spend with each other, we have some songs to account for. But I think it, it always starts in the conversations, who the person is, what they want out of this. You know, for me personally, I'm not here to make superstars. I'm here to make the interview a star. You know what I mean, and that that's different because nobody can say they're going to be a superstar. I mean, that's you know, real work, that too. Exactly. You know, that's so self -work and, and it's, is the, it's the hardest work. Exactly. And I think Georgia wants an artist has that self work put in. Like, that's a constant thing. That's a lifelong thing. But when they get to these certain checkpoints, they can go out and do whatever. They, they can add more of these slashes in their name because they put it in the work. You know I mean, and then they can handle the superstar part that may come. Because I think there's a level, superstardom is, is levels, right? Um, I know what we all think, but when you can go out and somebody recognize you, you know, great, it may only happen once, me, or it may only happen a few times, but that's a moment. I actually had somebody tell me for my birthday, a shout out to her, that she was in this little, little old town in North Carolina, and she saw somebody with a Jackson artist shirt on. And she was like, yo, I know, I know this dude. And it was actually somebody that I went to high school with. 
that bought one of my merch. But like hearing that, like that's a first for me. But when when you know those those type of things happen, and as the level goes up, it happens more. You got to be able to handle it. And I think many artists aren't ready for that. They just like y'all want to make dope music. I want to win a Grammy. I want to make money. And it's like yeah, all of that comes. Is it going to last? It comes and it goes. That's the part. Like, you got that. Exactly. <laughs> That's bleeding. Exactly. So how do you handle that and, and all of these things? So I really, I'm really honestly developing that aspect. Like, we can get to music. You know, of course, I'm looking at, you know, where you are can make you better. I'm pushing you. I tell people all the time, if, uh, if I don't make you a bit agitated, then I didn't really do my job. Because yeah. it's about making you grow making you do things that you haven't done, haven't tried. And I don't look at myself as a know-it-all, but I'm confident in what I know and what I see and, and what the Spirit tells me to just to, to pull out of you. And if you're willing to do that, I'm telling you, you're going to be the confidence artist in working with me and knowing that you can handle any situation, being professional, because the other aspect is the business, Lord knows. The business. Uh, many people, Jordan, I've run into a lot of people, and I'm going to just say this to y'all to be because this is how I am. This is what you see is what you get. I'm going to say this to y'all. Many people in 2023 call themselves artists, and they do not know what an electric press kit is. Come on, electronic press, whatever press kit. Call it. EPK. It, it's a lot of names, but an <laughs> EPK, they don't know what it is. And I'm just like, how? Like, wait a minute, what now? Like, and you want to come to me and talk. And the thing is, you don't know who, no, you don't know who you know. And so you want to bring that best foot forward. You want to be on time. You, 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 or being early is on time. Okay. Uh, you want to communicate in the best way possible. Uh, it's just like the little things. And I feel like that is one of the purposeful things that I bring to the industry when I talk about artist development. And of course, we want great music. I'm looking to work with people that, um, I'm really trying to create a sound. I, you know, I respect those that's just like riding the bandwagons, the trends of, of what's going on. But I'm really here to work with people that are, are building like a legacy, a, 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 a full brand, if you will, of of their person and their music. And uh, yeah, I love it. And so, you know, shout out to anyone who's looking for that. You know? And how do people find you though? Like how and how do you know you're ready for you know? A and R. Does the, does the record label find you, or does the artist find you? At what point do so they reach out? We 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 are still cultivating that right now. Okay, to be honest. Uh, however, you know, there's the traditional side. I mean, you know, we got Lord knows social media is obviously the easiest way. You know, I have people hitting me up. You know, because they know I'm an artist, or you know, they see my profile, I'm an artist. Uh, my key thing is just listening and paying attention. You know, thank God I've actually seen a lot of people reach out to me. LinkedIn is my favorite social media platform because, you know, you kind of weed out the people that ain't, they ain't really about this life, mm -hmm. right? Uh, as they say, it's real, like, 10% talent. The 90 is about how you work, how you carry yourself. So uh, LinkedIn has been a big platform where people you know, I find others. And so it, it's kind of back and forth. You know, I take time to find people to search on all platforms, uh, communities, webinars, any place that artists are. Um, I'm finally getting back into uh, doing in-person things again. Uh, so obviously that's that's still there. But the online community is, is definitely big for me. Um, and then people are just finding me. You know, they, they, that's why I say, you know, I'm very thankful and grateful that people can see this persona and see that I'm real and want to reach out. And so, you know, I work independently with my and in the pocket service. I also consult with the uh, record label, Estival Road Records, and, uh, you know, doing partnerships. Just so there's a whole intertwining, and, you know, I know talent, you know, bless you. Uh, <laughs> there's, uh, you know, people that just hit me up because they know what I do. So there's, there's so many ways to doing it. Um, and furthermore, I think it's because artist development has changed. Yes, you got the big labels who have the A&Rs. 
but it's not what it used to be. You know, now even the bigger labels, they they want a ready made artist. You know, it, it, your numbers are looking good. You're ready made uh, with the built in audience. It, exactly. It's the work is it's already done. Much looked <laughs> as, as that you're good, then okay. But a lot of artists are thinking like, okay, I got great music, blah blah blah. I want this, and it's like, if you don't know what an EPK is, how are you ready for big money? Like, I don't, I don't get. If you don't have an LLC, how you, what are you putting your money? If you haven't signed up for a PRO, what, you know? So it, it's like, regardless of how great the music is, there's still a lot of development that needs to be done. And I, and again, I don't say this if you are a person watching this and. You don't know or haven't done these things. We have all been there. I've been there. I was there. But you got to find and, and recognize the pivot that needs to take place. And so if you feel like, I need help with this. I need someone that has the experience, that has a, a great independent network that's willing to work with me. If I'm willing to put in the work, then that's when you come to me. And so I have that aspect of, of uh, switching to a subscription model six months we develop you, conclusion, you you gonna walk away with some music, you know, obviously. And then on the flip side, you know, maybe you're just an artist that wants an independent network, but wants to help with the strategy, wants the help of new engineers and, and producers. And we just work on the production. Obviously, because it's we, you still get some developing that still push you. But if you're that artist, that means, you know, it's to your point, you you are a bit ready made. You're a bit seasoned, you kind of know what you want. But you need that support. And I think that's what NR really is for me, is giving you that support in all areas to get your dope release plan out and then figure out other ways to make money because it's not just, hey, I made an album, buy my album, and stream it, right? There's so many ways. And so that's what I'm trying to bring on both sides uh, uh, of that spectrum. Yeah, look, speaking of original music, you released a song, uh, you know, This Black Skin that I think is a bop. You know, I know, I know you put it out a few years ago, but it's still a summer bop. All right. So talk to me about what went into writing that song and what is the This Black Skin Challenge? Yes. Yes. So shout out to that. I appreciate that. Uh, shout out to LMU Society for, for producing that one. My gosh, Kim in, my, in Orlando. Uh, I wrote this at a time. I mean, it's like it's a time that never goes away, right? But given the pandemic, George Floyd and many, many of our brothers and sisters, uh, a lot of creators were were writing their responses. And most of them, a lot of them was, I'm angry. Like, I'm really, like, fed up. I'm angry. And so uh, I was thinking, like, okay, I'm angry, too. I've been profiled. First I think first time I was, like, 16. Uh, just even recently as an Uber driver, I got profiled even by a black cop. And I go lie, Georgia, I didn't know what was going to happen. I'm a father. Uh, I've taught and worked with 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 young black and brown kids. So like, feel it, feel it. But I was like, you know what? I don't want to do like an angry black man song. I said, so... When I shout out, when I reached out to Shakim, I already knew I wanted like this hip hop jazzy feel. It ended up feeling, you know, very nineties, you know. So shout out to my eighty baby, the nineties era was the best. And so I was already feeling very nostalgic from that. Uh, and then it was like, okay, well, what do we like? What do we do with this? And it took me some time, but shout out to my wife. She, in conversation with her. She, I don't remember what she said, but she said something. I was like, oh, it's got to be about encouragement. And then immediately I was just like, stay encouraged, yo, brother, sister. And it just fell in my lap. And so I wrote it. I was like, all right, man, okay. Then it was time to write the verses. I was scared, George. They know, like, how do I come on this? Like, I can get real. I think that's how you know it's going to be good, though. When you scared a yes. little bit of yourself. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's how yes. you know you're you're making great sense. And, and Georgia, to your point, it was like but when I heard the hook after I, I recorded and everything, I was like, yo, this, this could be one that could change my life. You know, I'm trying not to speak that it's a hit phrase, 
but I do believe, you know, like in that brown sugar, when 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 the beat merges well with the lyrics, that's when you got. It. Uh, so I was afraid. I, I was still thinking like, okay, well, how do I approach these verses? Do I get lyrical? Do I like? So I'm thinking from topic to even like my flow, you know, go in like I got to show I can rap, like all of these different things. And I was like, you know what? Let's keep it simple, Jay. Still add that feeling in there, add add that um, add a history aspect to it, but just just keep it simple. And as it flows through the song, you know, I feel like that's what I did. Of course, I had to add the poetry on it, so that's where I feel like I kind of gave people a little more what they was probably wouldn't expect. Um, and then just got back into it, and I think the third verse, and and shout out to my home girl Lotus for um, adding her vocals to this. Another DMV artist, super talented. Uh, something for the kids to really like sing and chant. You know what I mean? And overall, um, the song came out very well. I'm pushing it, I'm pushing, I'm pushing it. And I thought of the challenge, uh, the black skin, this black skin challenge, because I wanted everyone to share what they felt proud of when they think of this black skin. And so, yes, I'm a black man. I'm speaking for black culture. This song is really for anyone. I mean, like, don't be afraid uh, about where you come from, the shade of your skin, uh, be who you are. Like, that's really what the song is about. But I wanted to really uh, just make one for the culture, as they say, you know, and the more that I can get other artists to share that, you know, whether you sing, whether you rap, whether you play an instrument, whether you're a motivational speaker, go to jazztheartist.com. You'll see the, the button. Uh, you can download the record. Please tag me, of course, you know, because that, that's the whole beauty of it. It's like, I want to see people really uh, just do something positive. I'm trying to figure out how I can use it, like, right now. I love it. And I, I would love to see <laughs> yeah. it placed somewhere yes. in a production. Yes. Hit, yes. hit somebody. Working on go it. Working on use it. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> shout, out to my, shout out to my singing agent. Uh, Andy for future hits. It finally does have uh, representation, and so oh, uh, a lot of people do see it. You know, especially in like a, a documentary type situation. Um, I even made a video Georgia for the Super Bowl, uh, just for social media. Shout out to the NFL. Like you know, they always got dope graphics, and saw the head to head with Mahomes and Hurts, and I was like, "Yo, this song would be perfect promo for this." And so I did my little thing just to. You know, just to see how it feel and, and think she licensed my joint. Uh, but it was a big moment. And so I, I think there's there's big use. And so we we looking forward to it coming. But yes, please, anybody want usage, hit me up. Let me let me know something. Justin, you've shared so much with us today about your journey. And it seems like every time you were set back, it was a set up. So what words of advice do you have to someone who's currently in a setback? And they're in between, you know, those blessings at the yes. moment. What words of advice yes. do you have for them? Be patient. I'm a very patient person, but no lie, the last few years, been a lot of setbacks, a lot of challenges. And uh, I've been focused to be more patient. And I even wrote a song about it. It's called Wait. And that's, it's funny how your own music is help is helping you, uh, in this case, to wait. And from that song, actually, I want people to understand that while you're waiting, you got to be prepared for when the wait is over. You don't want to be caught, you know, a guy's ready to give it to you. Like, hold on, man. Like, I got to do one more thing. Like, I'm not, you know, like, what you been doing, bro? Like, so you want to be prepared. So that means cultivating what it is that you do, you know, spending time with yourself. Uh, doing things that are making you happy. Uh, it's all about perspective. So if you're focusing on the good things and, and being aware of the challenging things, right? Because it's what's, what pushes us, what motivates us, what uh, takes us to the next level, the character building. You know, like I said, the T.D. Jake book that I'm reading, Crushing, you know, uh, is basically using the analogy of, of, of wine. You know, the grapes are being crushed to, turn out this beautiful taste in wine and that that's what's happening so uh you gotta endure the process you gotta really understand uh 
the purpose behind what you're producing. And uh, there was another thing that I just heard over the weekend, I believe, was uh, actually, I think, in the book of quality takes time. And so I always say when I first started this journey in music, I was like, look, God, don't don't give it to me early because I don't want to lose. You know what I mean? So if that means I have to endure where, you know, shoot, nobody knows my name or only the people that I engage with know my name, but they understand who I am and and, and they support and all this different. That That's cool. That's cool. Because when, when if and when it's more people that know, I want to be able to handle that. I want to be able to. To, to weave through that and be continue to be the example. Uh, so I think those are the things that we have to focus on while we're waiting and not so much when is it coming? Because when it comes, trust me, it will come. But you want to be ready and you want to keep. So. Welcome to the black party for us. Let me hear you say, I'm back and I love it. That's right. If you black, be proud of that. Take no slack. For every color person, here's your power back. Back. If you black, be proud of that. Take no slack. For every color person, here's your power back. Power back. We ready for the fight. We ready for the fight. We'll take off with no wings to spite. We give this world life. It's only right.